What's up everybody? Welcome to Among the Fence. My name is Aaron. Today we're going to be checking out the new album Moon Healer by the band Job for a Cowboy. For those of you who don't know who Job for a Cowboy is, they formed in Arizona in 2003 and became one of the most influential deathcore bands when they released their EP Doom and then directly after that switched over to playing nothing but death metal and became one of the most influential death metal bands of that time as well and then they basically fell off of the earth when they released their last album Sun Eater back in 2014 and it took nine long years for us to get any new music from them until they dropped a single for Moon Healer because of that I would be willing to say that this album might be one of the most anticipated uh, releases, at least in the death metal scene of 2024. Moon Healer is about a close friend pursuing enlightenment, and by doing so, he is consuming hallucinogen drugs. It kind of picks up from where the Sun Eater storyline left off as the friend is describing these encounters and experiences that they've had. The opening track, Beyond the Chemical Doorway, voices these vivid hallucinations as he reaccounts his experiences of going through Gnostic-like realms as he's basically losing his mind. It's got a really slow groove and then it picks up speed eventually. The riff and drums are fantastic and the vocals are really piercing through. Musically, this is all around one of the best death metal songs that I've ever heard. Even the solo is fantastic as they are throughout all these songs, which is something that I didn't think I would enjoy. Etched in Oblivion continues the storyline and the overall musical atmosphere with a more chaotic song progression. The guitar goes back and forth from from being kind of comforting and relaxing or you know something you could kind of ease into to being really confusing as the drums and the vocals are playing off of each other. The vocal performance in this is everything that I remember Job for a Cowboy being with having kind of an old school flair to the enunciations. And speaking of old school, Grinding Wheels of Ophanum also takes you back to early 2000s and it has one of the sickest riffs that i've ever heard right around like the 52 seconds like minute mark or somewhere around there i could just listen to this over and over again and the song is about their friend who is going crazier and crazier as he's slowly losing more and more touch with reality it is filled with some of the best music that i've heard uh, it's just a roller coaster of beauty and this is definitely my favorite song on the album and it's one of my favorite songs that joffrey cowboy has ever done the sun gave me ash, so I sought out the moon is another heavy hitting riff in the intro. It's super addictive. And this time the friend is basically begging to get out of this hallucination. He's trying so hard to get out of it. The rhythm is very powerful with the guitar, bass, drums, and vocals all hitting just right and all hitting right at the same time. And this one feels a little bit more modern to me. It reminds me a little bit of maybe Signs of the Swarm ish and then we also have the song into the crystalline crypt which really takes its time with a little bit more mid-tempo grooves however it is still not afraid to pick things up and go a little bit quicker and to amp everything up it feels a little bit more bare bones though and because of that to me it made it feel a little bit more uneasy and the big chords throughout this entire thing really let the vocals and the drums shine through the Sorrow-Filled Moon goes back to having a dynamic riff, and it feels really chaotic again due to the song structure and just how progressive it is. Their friend is now going even crazier. This song talks about how he stares into the forbidden chasm, which is the moon, and his eyes swivel back into his skull, and all this to me just sounds like a really bad trip. It also makes for a cool contrast because this song feels very lighthearted, and the lyrics are pretty dark. The storyline isn't very happy, but to me it makes it feel like... He's kind of giving into this. He's really letting it take over him. He's going to see where the solutionation is going to go. He's looking to like flesh it out. How deep is this going to go? He's looking into the kind of, it's kind of just, it's kind of going with the flow at this point, which brings us to the next song, The Agony Seeping Storm. Uh, this was the first single that they released, but it doesn't really feel like a single to me. Thank God. It's very much in your face from start to finish with very aggressive vocals and riff. Uh, their friend has now been completely engulfed in sadness and he is now possessed by it. And now he's really hoping to have seen like a glimmer of the sun instead of being in the darkness that is the moon and it even has a fake out where it makes you think that this song is over and then randomly it just jumps right back into it again it doesn't have a build-up or nothing it just stops 
and just goes right back into it. The Forever Rot was another single that was released and thank God it doesn't sound like a single and it is also the closing track on this album. It reminds me a little bit of Tarnished Gluttony, mostly in the intro. The riff is very dynamic, but this song also isn't really in a hurry. It takes its time, it's got a slow build. The vocal performance and the enunciation in this is fantastic. It's some of the best stuff on this album. And it also finishes the story off nicely as their friend He's basically completely gone now. As far as he knows, he has ascended into eternity. He's basically explaining how he's just a shell of his former self. He can't see the ghost within himself anymore. But now he's going to live forever, even if he's basically full of despair and he's feeling all the sorrow and so much grief. He's at least happy that he believes he's going to be living forever now in eternity. So there's basically, there's no way out for him, but at the same time, there's no like wondering if he's going to die. He's finding a little bit of relief in that, I guess. But yeah, it still makes for a pretty cool ending to this entire storyline. I absolutely love this album. We've been waiting 10 years for a new album and they freaking delivered. This is one of the best death metal albums I've ever heard. Yes, it does have a little bit of deathcore stuff thrown in there. Some people would argue and say this is more progressive deathcore where, I don't know, to me, it feels pretty death metal-ish, but I mean, I just absolutely love Jaw for a Cowboy and their entire discography, even down to Doom, which was like the beginning of deathcore for them pretty much. And I gotta say, I don't know, maybe I need to go back and listen to some of their older stuff, but this, uh, it, it might be my favorite. It might be my favorite album that they've ever released. I was really worried that they were going to let us down like almost every other band that has returned after 2020 has done, especially since it's been so long since they've released anything, but they've absolutely killed it. The production in this is perfect. You can hear everything just the way it's supposed to be, along with the music and the storyline. Everything fits together so well. It felt really modern in some areas, and it also felt more traditional death metal-ish in different areas. Uh, they basically showed us that these guys are still just superior musicians and superior songwriters and they just have the best chemistry when working with each other and they just they just know how to write good songs it almost feels so effortless so with all that said i got to give moon healer by jaw for a cowboy a 9.1 out of 10. but i want to know what you guys think i'm trying really hard not to be biased and fanboy over this but at the same time i just appreciate how brilliant it really is so leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of Moon Healer, what you would rate it, what your favorite song is. And if you enjoyed this video, you want to help me out, don't forget to give it a like. Doing that does so much with YouTube's algorithm. It'll keep my videos popping up in your recommended section on YouTube. And if you want to support me even further, please feel free to subscribe and bring the bell icon. Do any of those things does absolutely wonders for me, and I appreciate it more than you guys could ever imagine. And thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to listen to me sit here and talk about music. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or night whenever you happen to be watching this. And I will talk to you guys next time.